Hello and welcome to our special program, To The Point. The new government is in place for almost uh, six months now and the main opposition party, the Congress, has seen a lot of changes uh, uh, in terms of uh, the kind of voices which have been coming within the party as well as the kind of preparation which uh, the party's central leadership seems to be doing to try and revive the organization. Today we have with us a senior leader of the party and general secretary, uh, Mr. Digvijay Singh. Sir, welcome to uh, our show. Uh, First and foremost, uh, let's straight away come to defeat in 2014 Lok Sabha elections. There have been uh, a committee which was already set up, the Antony Committee. There, there was an internal report which has been, uh, as I understand, which has been submitted to the party president. The action is likely to be taken. Some action plan is being made. But what is the general understanding within the party as to why such a humiliating loss? loss? Democracy means change. We were in power for 10 years. Well, uh, we delivered what we promised. Each issue of the election promises we delivered. Every year, the UPA government produced its, its uh, report card. Mm -hmm. And on every indicator, the government of India progressed. But unfortunately, we lost in the war of perception. We were termed as the most corrupt government ever, which was factually wrong. If there was a corruption, we took action against them. Whether it was a minister, or a member of parliament, or a bureaucrat, or a corporate senior officer, we have not spared anyone. But yet, the CAG reports of 2G and coal blocks gave a perception of huge amount of scams. They were not scams, they were notional losses. If there was a scam in 2G, it was not more than 200 to 400 crores, which is still very uh, large in real terms. But because of that, a minister went to jail. Mm -hmm. uh, members of parliament went to jail. Similarly, in the coal block, we followed the same policy that uh, the, the, the Congress government in, uh, in pre-96 and the following governments from 96 to 2014 followed. NDA. Even NDA government, they followed the same policy. Mm -hmm. Yet, uh, the CAG in his own wisdom said there's a notional loss of 1,80,000 crores. Why? Because it was not auctioned. How could we auction the blocks without the rules and the law in place? There was no law. So, so, so you believe, as you rightly, as you're uh, pointing out, that uh, it was a war lost because of the perception, Absolutely. because uh, uh, the party could not uh, reach out to the masses. There is a section within the party which believes, and there are statements which have come in time and again which points to the fact that uh, the senior leadership of the party was ineffective in reaching out to the masses. Exactly the same thing as, as you are saying, but maybe in different words. So do you agree? Well, it, uh, why only senior leadership? It, it goes down the line. If the, from the AICC to the Pradesh Congress Committee, to the District Congress Committee, to the Block Congress Committee, to the polling booths, if we had put the whole thing in the right perception, this wouldn't have happened, mm -hmm. but unfortunately we didn't. You yourself made a statement once about one of the uh, top leaders of your party, that's the party vice president Rahul Gandhi, that he should uh, be more communicative. And the same kind of remarks have come in from other senior leaders as well, that uh, Rahul should now go ahead and uh, you know um, communicate more. So is that a post-factor realization that if that communication uh, process would have been a little more efficient pre-election time, then the results would have been a little different? Well, pre-election, post-election are uh, views remain the same, that uh, when the BJP leader, Mr. Narin Modi, was on social media 24 into 7, was on the channels all the time, mm -hmm. we hardly uh, had space in the media uh, and the ratio would be 1 is to 3. So therefore, I think uh, we could not really convey our message, communicate our message and also communicate 
of the good thing which the UPA government had done in UPA 1 and UPA 2. Okay. One, uh, one more viewpoint which has uh, come uh, from uh, you know, leaders of your party, specifically the younger lot, uh, few of the younger lot, uh, to quote specifically uh, former finance minister P. Chidambaram, son Karthi Chidambaram, uh, his suggestion and uh, simil similar suggestions on similar lines are that you know, state units of the party should be given a little more freedom to function. Uh, the uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, rules and procedures within the party of having AICC observers uh, or maybe general secretary in charge and secretary in charge, that's an organizational, organizational setup. But then the state unit should be given a lot more, a little bit more of uh, freedom to operate uh, on the, in their own way. I totally agree with him. In fact, this is exactly what Mr. Rahul Gandhi wants, that the regional leadership should be built up. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, in fact, this is what he has tried to do in Youth Congress and NSUI, that the whole setup should not be based on, on uh, nominations. There should be election. And therefore, that means more authority to the elected bodies. And what do you make of the younger lot in the party now uh, uh, stressing themselves, uh, uh, you know, putting their uh, best foot forward, uh, making statements? We saw some of the uh, younger secretaries also urging uh, the senior leaders not to uh, target the uh, party's top leadership. None of the old leadership has ever targeted the Congress leadership. At the same time, I have been saying this for a long time, the, youth, yeah, the younger leadership must take over. I was the first uh, congressman in 2009 saying the same thing was what the secretaries are saying in 2014. So does that also, also apply to the po uh, post of party president? Should Rahul also go ahead and take over no, as you said? Uh, once? You know, as far as that is concerned, we have a congress president uh, in Mrs. Sonia Gandhi who has proved to be a very successful uh, AICC president. But yet at the same time, change is the law of nature. So therefore, the younger leadership must come. Is that indicative? All these, uh, you know, uh, views being expressed uh, and uh, you know, uh, discussions being held, uh, maybe in party form as well. It must be held. Uh, I am not aware. Yeah, since you are the general secretary, you must be aware. Uh, but these views expressed in the uh, public, in the media, is that an indication that uh, uh, you know a huge organizational change is in the offing in the Congress, as we have been hearing for quite a while now? How soon? Is that expected? Congress president appointed Mr. A.K. Antony to head a committee which went and discussed the issue at length with the top leadership of the Congress party. Mm -hmm. And they have produced a report which is with the Congress president. Mr. Rahul Gandhi is discussing with the, all the senior leaders as to what are their suggestions. So once the roadmap is ready, they will come out with it. And what uh, is the kind of, uh, you know, changes can we look forward to since we've been uh, hearing about uh, a more involvement of the younger lot in the party. And we've seen uh, during uh, the UPS days as well, there were younger, uh, uh, you know, leaders in the party who were given ministerial positions, who were given responsibilities. Uh, people like Sachin Pilot being made uh, the, uh, the president of the state unit in Rajasthan. So is, is that stamp going to be there? Where exactly. The youngers yeah, will be taking absolutely. Over? Absolutely. Absolutely. Younger leadership will be given more authority and more responsibility. Okay, let's change tack now to uh, the, the fight over ideologies between Congress and BJP. And uh, since uh, the time Narendra Modi has come to power as Prime Minister, this fight seems to have grown uh, a little, you know, uh, uh, become a little more uh, intensive. Uh, we saw the case of, uh, you know, Sadar Patel and Indira Gandhi's anniversary. We saw it there. The, uh, your party leaders were uh, dismissive of the fact that uh, uh, there were no functions being organized by uh, the government. The government had decided that they will not hold any functions for anyone apart from uh, the father of the nation. Is that uh, a very well thought out strategy which you believe uh, Prime Minister Modi and uh, his counterpart in the BJP, that's uh, BJP President Amit Shah has? See, we are very happy to note that Mr. Narendra Modi, who has been abusing the Congress party legacy, who has been abusing the Congress party's uh, ideology, is trying to appropriate the legacy of the Congress party. And he is not trying to promote the ideology of uh, Golwalkar ji or Higdewar ji and Savarkar ji. Uh, uh, at, uh, at its appears, but f the, uh, behind the scene, 
it is the ideology of the hate and communal violence of the BJP and Sangh, which is primarily driving uh, its cadre and the uh, the lead leadership there. But uh, on the face of it, Mr. Narendra Modi is trying to appropriate the Congress Party legacy. But that is a big, uh, I would say, uh, a misconception that he is trying to create. And they are masters in creating these misconceptions. What we are trying to say is, okay, the Congress ideology is bad. So don't uh, try to appropriate the Congress ideology. After all, how can you forget this Mr. Sardar Vallabhai Patel, who had said that RSS is a communal organization. It is responsible for communalizing the whole political situation in India and therefore it should be banned. Well, uh, if after that, if he wants to appropriate uh, Sardar Vallabhai Patel, we have no problem. Mm -hmm. If you, they want to appropriate Mahatma Gandhi, uh, whose assassination uh, was because of the ideology uh, of hate and communal violence of the Sangh and the Hindu Mahasabha. Okay, great. Interesting. Uh, but uh, many, uh, count, um, you know, uh, uh, counterparts in your party, your counterparts in the party doesn't seem to see, uh, you know, think on the same lines. There are several other views as well. We'll uh, come to those views, but uh, before that, let's take a short break and when we come back, we will ask Digvijay Singh about exactly what is the party's plan for next four and a half years till the time they are in the opposition. Welcome back. Senior Congress leader and General Secretary of the party, Digvijay Singh, is still with us. Uh, sir, before we went into the break, you said that there is no harm in, uh, you believe that there is no harm in, uh, you know, uh, BJP and Narendra Modi, the Prime Minister, trying to appropriate uh, the legacy of uh, Congress leaders such as uh, Nehru and Sadar Patel. But then, uh, many in your party believe that this is a ploy uh, by the uh, ruling party to de-link these icons from the Gandhi family and uh, the Congress party. But they have also accepted the role played by Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. They've also played, uh, accepted the role by Mrs. Indra Gandhi. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the, 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 the history of this country, pre-independence and post-independence, cannot ignore the contribution of the Nehru Gandhi family in freedom movement, and after that, building a new modern India. Okay. Can, how can that history be changed? Then why not uh, you know, um, uh, send an invitation to the Prime Minister or uh, the BJP as a party while uh, your party was commemorating 125th birth anniversary of uh, uh, the first Prime Minister Pandit Nehru in New Delhi in the form of an international conference? Why leave them uh, aside? Well, has BJP ever invited Congress party in as any convention? You would like to know. But then the Prime Minister could have been invited. But again, would Prime Minister, as a, from, who is, belongs to the BJP, would have agreed to attend a, a party a function of the Congress Party, held by the Congress Party? So you also agree to uh, the statements which have been given by other party leaders that there is no need, there was no point in inviting uh, Prime Minister in the first place itself? Well, the question is, has BJP ever invited Mrs. Sonia Gandhi or when Mr. Uh, uh, Dr. Manmohan Singh was there, have they ever invited Dr. Manmohan Singh in any of the conferences which BJP has held? Okay, leaving aside uh, BJP and uh, the Prime Minister, some of your own leaders and senior leaders seem miffed with the fact that they were, either they were not invited and also, uh, you know, a very interesting coincidence that some of the very senior leaders of the party were missing from those uh, two days of celebrations, to quote a few, uh, uh, you know, senior ministers such as uh, A.K. Anthony, even uh, the finance minister, I guess, was not uh, uh, to be seen in those two days celebrations. No, all senior people of the Congress party were invited. But uh, as far as I know, Mr. Anthony ji was not keeping well, so he couldn't come. As far as Chidamaram ji is concerned, probably he was there for a day. So I can't really say because, but all the senior leaders of the Congress party were invitees. Okay, in the first half, you made a, a very a significant statement. Rather, you agreed with the statement which was made by Karthi Chidamaram that there should be a decentralization, uh, you know, uh, to the, uh, to, towards the state units and more freedom should be given. Do you believe that the absence of such a decentralized system is the very fact uh, behind uh, the, um, you know, kind of uh, 
defections which we have been witnessing from the congress party which are which is which are which are rather on a very uh, you know large scale uh, now uh, and we saw that in haryana elections in maharashtra elections uh, we've seen in one of the states in, in which you were general secretary in charge in assam as well and now in jammu and kashmir also so there yeah you are forgetting history there was a split in 1969 on the basis of ideology mm -hmm. there was a split in the congress party in 1978 mm -hmm. there was a split in the congress party in 95 96 yeah. there are some people who can't do without power i know of some very senior congress ex central ministers changing over the part uh, from congress to janata party or bjp because they wanted to retain the government accommodation in delhi so so therefore such kind of people are also there so we are not worried we want committed people who would like to work in the in politics on the basis of ideology on the basis of commitment to the ideology and that is what more what is more important so you believe all these defections is not going to affect congress certainly in its not. worst time ever certainly not no political uh, party uh, there is a vacuum the vacuum will be filled up not even uh, you know uh, moving away of uh, leaders like uh, gk vasan in uh, tamil nadu certainly in congress not. certainly not of, uh, it's not the first time gk vasan or mupnar ji has yeah. moved out of the congress party so you believe all these are uh, you know these the all these movements are uh, sort of you know a part of the process is, is that what you're trying well, to indicate as i said earlier the congress party remains on track with its left of center secular socialist uh, modern modern liberal view point mm -hmm. and anyone who doesn't believe in this uh, has a right to leave but most of them are leaving for their own personal uh, you, uh, agenda so therefore we are not worried about that let's come back to the tussle between uh, your party and the ruling party bjp now another of the issues apart from uh, the legacy and the national icons uh, whom we were talking about uh, is uh, which has recently surfaced also is the issue of uh, the new government renaming uh, several schemes now there were uh, allegations that the congress government has uh, named almost all of the central schemes or majority of the central schemes uh, after the gandhi family leaders uh, rajiv gandhi indira gandhi or the first prime minister pandit jawaharlal nehru and uh, the new government seems to be now changing tack they have recently the cabinet has taken a decision of renaming or rather merging rajiv gandhi uh, gramin vidyutikaran yojana and renaming it as deen dayal upadhyay uh, vidyutikaran yojana see if they rename uh, and if they if they sort of uh, start a new scheme they they can name it uh, in in anyone's lead, uh, leader's name we don't mind but to sort of uh, change the name i don't think it is the right thing to do because uh, every government decision has to be respected by the successful gov success uh, government success succeeding it for example there is a the issue which has come about renaming of the hyderabad uh, airport, airport yes. from rajiv gandhi uh, airport to uh, in name of um, ntr which i think is not the right thing to do otherwise this this thing will keep on changing okay several other issues now let me uh, you know come to the government's decision since uh, it has been uh, in power for 6 months and uh, the uh, you know the winter session uh, we are we are uh, hoping that in, during the winter session there will be a lot of bills which will also be moved by the government when it comes to changes another of the decisions which is uh, you know um, garnering a lot of attention as of now is the decision to go ahead and discontinue uh, the german language in the kendriya vidyalayas and replace it with the sanskrit you see uh, we uh, have um, for been following the accepted education policies of the government of india mm -hmm. three language formula has been uh, a part of our education policy so voluntarily if the some of the students have opted for german mm -hmm. they should not be forced to uh, cancel that and adopt the third language uh, as sanskrit mm -hmm. it should be left to the student and the parent to decide what is the third language they, they want to adopt 
Okay, and what about uh, the issue of uh, black money? Because, uh, you know, there have been uh, several allegations which have been made from your party in the recent uh, past as well. Uh, there were uh, allegations made from your party's leaders that uh, the government is, uh, the new government is backtracking on its promises, including the Prime Minister himself, uh, wherein uh, the promise during the campaign time was that uh, they will bring the black money as soon as they're back in power. It's very interesting. Uh, the issue of black money was stashed abroad was first taken up by Mr. Lal Krishna Advani post-2004 defeat of the BJP. Mm -hmm. And they set up a committee which gave a figure of 70 uh, lakh crore. Mm -hmm. Then I don't know from where Mr. Baba Ramdev came up with 400 lakh crore. And Mr. Narendra Modi, the, the, the BJP prime ministerial candidate in his campaign, said there is so much of black money abroad that we can distribute uh, 3 lakh rupees to every citizen of the country and the whole country can run on a, in one single year, year without taxation. Now, after becoming the Prime Minister, he says that no one in, the, in this country knows how much money, uh, black money is outside. Well, this is cheating. This is misleading the people of this country. It is duping the people of this country, which Mr. Prime Minister must apologize for making wrong statements and duping this, the people of this country. Now he says we really don't know. So what's your party stand? Is, that, our stand, is, there, is there no black money? Our, our, abroad, our, our, is stand, our, our stand, Mr. Daya, is the Congress party led UPA government has taken all the steps which could have been taken by any government to unearth black money stashed abroad. But you must understand that money belonging to the Indians outside the country can be a legal uh, earned money. Second, it could be money uh, uh, deposited abroad without paying taxes. Mm -hmm. The third is money through uh, ill-gotten means, the ill-gotten money through illegal means. That is what can be confiscated. But if I... Uh, if I have deposited, uh, if uh, Mr. Digvijay Singh has deposited a certain amount in, uh, in, in, in any country abroad, which is, and he's paid taxes, so that is not Ill, uh, black money. Or if Digvijay Singh has, uh, has uh, kept some money abroad uh, and he's not paid taxes, then he should be paid, uh, he should pay a penalty and pay taxes. That is the second thing. But if someone has has earned money through bribe or uh, uh, drug trafficking or other illegal means, then the money should be confiscated and the person who has got this money should be sent behind the bars. But then why allege uh, the new that uh, the new government is not doing anything? They uh, released the names, uh, they <laughs> submitted the names to the SIT, there were 800 names and SIT has been formed. The government says that they're doing all, all S they can. SIT was formed not because of them, it, SIT was formed because of the Supreme Court order. Mm -hmm. And Supreme Court order had come just before the parliament elections. Mm -hmm. So the then government of India said, the, let the new government decide. So let this first be clear, the SIT was not created by government of India on their own. It was created at the behest of the Supreme Court order, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, what they are doing today is exactly what legally we have done before uh, in our tenure. Mm -hmm. And we have... A, a, a treaty where the names can't be disclosed. This is a binding, uh, a, a legal binding on the government of India. But unfortunately, the same Mr. Arun Jaitley, who went to town said, saying that the Congress party is hiding names, also uh, made an allegation that Congress, if the names are announced, Congress party will be embarrassed. Mm -hmm. This is again a, 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 a very, uh, I would say, uh, it is cheating. Uh, I would call it cheating the people by giving false information and misleading the people of this country by the finance minister of this country. So you say that uh, even if all the names are going to be released, we, Congress party we have no problem. We have no problem. Let the, uh, the BJP uh, uh, announce uh, whatever it has to do. If it leaks, if it's, uh, it uh, makes it uh, public, every person who has illegal money abroad this country they have got the legal right and they are free and they have the free uh, freedom to do so.
Okay, one last issue uh, in this, uh, you know, conversation. That's about uh, the Congress being isolated uh, in, in, in defeat uh, in terms of uh, its allies. You lost NCP in uh, Maharashtra during elections. Both of you, that's Congress and NCP, fought elections separately. NCP moved to the BJP's, uh, you know, uh, quarters. There is a bid to form an anti-BJP bloc. And that is a little evident in Bihar, wherein Congress, RJD and JDU seems to be, uh, you know, seems to have come together. One, do you believe that such a bloc can be formed? Two, can such a bloc accommodate leaders like Mamta Banerjee and Sharad Pawar, who have left you uh, over, an, uh, over the period of time, and especially Sharad Pawar and his party, who's moved over to the other side? Well, Mr. Dayad, politics is an art of the possible. Whatever the possibilities are, and uh, if, the, if there is a, a consensus or an agreement to create a block of political people, but following the same ideology of secularism and socialism and liberal modern thought, if they happen to come together to fight the communal challenge, I think it is a logical thing to do. But uh, will Congress be, uh, you know, the lead party in that? Because there are the, the offshoots of the uh, erstwhile Janta Party who, are also trying to come together who, and form we a have, We have no problem if the old Janta Dal wants to come together. They are most welcome to do it. But the Congress would uh, keep its doors open? No, as far as that is concerned, it's a very delicate political issue, which I can't uh, sort of comment on my own. It will have to be discussed in the working committee. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Thank you for your time. Anytime. So this was Congress leader and General Secretary Digvijay Singh with free and frank views on the present political situation in the country as well as within his own party. Keep watching Rajasabha Television. We'll come back again with a different leader and on a different issue.